Alright, what I want to do today is to give you a quick overview of a, an aircraft that was sent to us by Event 38. Um, a company that makes um, small UAVs, low-cost UAVs, um, specifically for uh, people like farmers who want to do aerial photography over their crops. So this is a model um, called the E382. You can see there, um, they call it the E382 from the company called the Event 38. So this model is based on the Skywalker 1900. Um, I believe it is the V6 version. So this is the, the last version that still had the, the fully foam um, tail boom as opposed to the carbon fiber tail boom um, that was, uh, what, what was used to replace this in later models. I think um, since 2013 and now the, new, the newest, the so-called 2014 models, um, have a foam fuselage and then a carbon fiber tail boom um, instead of this foam tail boom. Just in case you were wondering why I'm not doing this outside, this is why. We had some significant snow yesterday. So keep in mind that this is not a review of the Skywalker as such. Um, there are many videos and reviews of the Skywalker available. Um, I'm going to review it from the perspective of its intended use which is aerial photography over farmers' crops. Um, just to point out a few things, um, you know, it, has a, it comes with a, a Turnagy motor. Um, that's the, the D35368, 1000 kV. And um, they supply a 4-cell, 5000 milliamp hour battery. So this, is, this comes with the model. And it actually works very well on 4S. So um, I and I've flown it many times now with this battery. Um, works exceptionally well. Um, and the economy of this model is something that is really phenomenal. So um, on a on a day when there's not much wind, you can actually fly um, and cruise at an amp draw of about five amps. So if you draw 5 amps with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, in theory you can fly for an hour. Um, so practically you can fly for probably about you know, 40 minutes or so very safely. It comes with an RD Pilot. This is the RD Pilot um, APM 2.6 version. Um, Pre-installed and pre-configured. The, the firmware is uploaded. Um, the, the Event 38, the company will actually also supply you with a parameter file that you can get from the website. Um, and the parameters work very well. Um, out of the box, it flies perfectly. Um, so, of course, it, the um, RD Pilot 2.6 comes with the magnetometer coupled with the, the GPS receiver. And the GPS receiver and the autopilot are in this this bay that's right beneath the, the, wing, the wing saddle. And then just going back to the motor here, um, it comes supplied with a 50 amp Hobby King electronic speed control. And that, that should be adequate. Um, the max amp draw in this model at full power is, is just about 35 to, 30, to about 38 perhaps at the maximum with a fully charged battery. This here is the open bay door, and in there I, I made my, my camera tray. So this is a typical foam camera tray that I like to use, um, and the Canon S100 fits in there perfectly well. Um, what I was hoping to do with this model though is to fly a slightly bigger camera, something like a Sony NEX, um, but the fuselage is not wide enough to accommodate that. But it works well for something like uh, a, a Canon S100. Um, just some more here inside. Um, I, <clears throat> I got the version of this that did not have receiver, so I installed my own receiver. I'm using a Tyrannis radio uh, from FreeSky, and there is the receiver in there. Um, there you can see the, the, um, the power supply and current sensor that comes with the Arduino Pilot. 
and then there towards the back you can see the telemetry radio, the RD pilot um, telemetry radio that operates on 900, 915 megahertz. The servos are of the typical 9 gram um, variety. I'm not sure if this is um, HXT or if it's the Tower Pro type, um, but you know, typical 9 gram blue servo. Now the, the Skywalker flies very well. Um, but uh, this version of the Skywalker does have an issue with instability because of the foam uh, boom at the back of the fuselage. This foam boom, if it's not reinforced, can be too flexible for high speed. And that is the case with this model as supplied by Event 38. So um, it flies perfectly well up to about 30 meters per second or so. But then the, the, the boom can flex too much and it becomes unstable. Um, it's also a little bit too unstable for my liking um, on the junction between the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. So something that I added that helped a lot um, were carbon fiber tubes um, to strengthen this junction between the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Another change that I made from the standard configuration, let me see if I can turn this around here. Um, this hole in the front where you can see the foam uh, through the, the tape is where the original camera position was. Um, so this is how it is applied from Event 38. But I prefer to have the camera very close to the CG. So there is my CG and this is where I'd like to have my camera position. Um, in that way I can use different cameras of different weights and it will not affect my CG too much. So um, this, this is um, a change that I made from the original. So I just plugged that hole with a piece of foam, taped it over with clear, clear, foam, uh, clear tape, and then made an alternative opening at the back, close to the CG, and that's where my camera will go. Something that can be very useful about this model um, for people who, who haven't been in, in the hobby for a while um, is that it comes with all the accessories that you that you need to get going. So it comes with a, a charger, so this is the charger that it, it actually came with. Um, let's see if I can get that out there. So this is a, a turn energy accu cell. Um, that's perfectly adequate for this battery. So this, this is a 4S battery. Um, this charger can charge this, this battery you know, fairly efficiently. Um, it also comes with a power supply that gives you enough power to, to essentially accommodate this battery. So it will not really give you the full potential of this um, charger. Um, you would need a more powerful power supply for that. But it's, it's perfectly adequate for this use. And here, I'll just to give you an overview of the wing. So this is the 1900 version, so the 1.9 meter version of the Skywalker. So 1900 millimeter wingspan. Um, it has a slight dihedral towards the wing tips that adds to stability under the right conditions. Um, it is a fairly you know, large wing surface. So the plane can, can really carry a, a significant amount of weight. So um, although I'm using only a 5000 milliamp hour battery, this aircraft can actually easily accommodate more battery capacity. Um, so you can use that for longer duration or potentially you can also use um, bigger heavier cameras. So again, the, the biggest limitation in terms of, of what you can carry for a camera is the width of the fuselage. Um, you would have to do some significant modifications to be able to carry a bigger camera than a typical point and shoot. Now I do believe that the newer versions of the Skywalker, so the, the 2014 for example, has a wider fuselage and I actually ordered one of those so I, I will be able to tell you um, hopefully in the not too distant future whether or not it can actually accommodate the bigger camera um, I would like to fly it with something like a, a Sony NEX6 or NEX7. There is the, the battery bay. 
So again, in the original configuration, this would be this would be the camera bay, and the battery would go in the back. But um, the way that I like to to configure it, um, the battery goes in the front, and the camera in the back. So um, this nose cone, it, it, it's, it's of course um, designed primarily for FPV use, so it has that, that little platform there that's made for camera. Um, in my case, of course, I have a camera that's pointing straight down, so I, I'm not using that. Um, it has a, a lip there that you install like this, and then in front it has a screw. Now just a little tip on the screw to prevent you from losing the screw make a, a little rubber washer um, from a piece of silicon tubing, field tubing and that prevents you from losing the screw uh, when you have this disassembled and you walk around to make sure that the screw doesn't fall out. Let's take a look at some flight footage. Um, this model is very easy to launch by hand, very stable, easy to fly. So it's not intimidating at all for you know, somebody without a lot of flying experience. Landings are, are quite easy. Um, it's stable even at low speeds. So landing in small spaces is also quite easy. So as I mentioned, um, the Skywalker is a very well-known airframe. Um, you know, its flying characteristics are well known as well. You know, it's been used for FPV for the most part for a fairly long time already. So um, we know that this plane can fly well. The question is, is it a good airframe for the application of looking at crops? Now, um, the answer is, I think, very definitely yes, but you have to use it under the right circumstances. The limitation is that this plane can't really handle a lot of wind. So if you live in a place like Kansas, like we do, um, you know, wind is almost always something you have to contend with. So on those days when the wind is really howling, um, this will not be the best airframe. Uh, but on calm days, um, this, this can work very well. And it has a you know, very good duration. So especially on those occasions when you need something that will stay in the air for a while and also will fly very slowly um, so you get uh, a high degree of overlap in your images um, this will be a very good model for that application however um, for those days when you need something that that will penetrate wind well um, and still carry it a fairly big load and, and have decent duration um, you know, this is a new Spade 66 from Right Wing RC that I'm assembling as well. So I'm in the final stages of, of finishing this one, and hopefully I'll give you a, a more in-depth look at that in the not too distant future. But this is uh, the kind of model that you would probably want to use more um, on those those very windy, blustery days, whereas this one would be more suitable for nice and calm days um, when you want something that's very easy to launch and can stay in the air for a while. So, in summary, after using this aircraft for quite a few times now already, um, I, would I recommend it? I would say for sure, yes. Um, I would definitely recommend this, um, especially for somebody who is just starting out, who needs something to learn on. If you, so, if you're new to um, aerial photography, especially aerial mapping type of applications, um, this would be a good model to start with. Um, it is one of the easiest models to launch and very easy to fly. It flies slowly and uh, very predictably. So um, this would be definitely appropriate as as a as a starter model. But you know, even though it might be a, considered a starter model, um, it is definitely capable of doing some high quality work. So um, another factor that is in favor of this model is the cost. Um, you know, it, it comes absolutely ready to fly and there are not many um, you know, aircraft out there that's in this price class that you can say that about. So um, it comes with an autopilot that's pre-configured, you don't have to you know, mess with that kind of thing, you don't have to do the tuning, everything is done for you um, and it's essentially just a matter of taking it out of the box, doing some minor final assembly, um, charging the battery and you're ready to go. 
So if you have any further questions, um, please feel free to make a comment down below the video. Um, and thanks for watching. And if you like this, please thumbs up so that other people can find it as well. And if you think these kinds of videos are useful to you, please subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.